the first question we have for you is, what is your finest aviation memory? I guess the finest would have to be receiving my wings. Uh, a lot of training leading up to there, uh, 11 months at Centralia, and uh, receiving my pilot's wings with my mom and dad present for the graduation. That was my finest. Just to uh, describe for those people that, that don't know wings, just what getting your oh, wings I'm is all about. I'm taking a lot for granted. Well, you go through training and uh, when uh, the instructors, the hierarchy, feel that you're qualified to fly an airplane by yourself and do a certain job, ready to go to operational training, they say, okay, uh, you're entitled to uh, receive the coveted wings. And uh, in January of 1951, I got the wings. And I have to say that my wings were pinned on my sleeve because naval aviators wore their wings on their sleeve. All of your time in aviation, what's the, what's the proudest moment, whether it's uh, when you were working with some of the uh, Lockheed or, or some of the other companies or whether you were flying? I think perhaps my proudest moment would, uh, <clears throat> would be uh, uh, some testing we were doing uh, on an electrical, it was called the anti-submarine warfare tactical navigation system, which was basically a system that would, electrical, mechanical, and optical, which incorporated the feedback from the airplane, uh, height, uh, airspeed, heading, and what have you, and an input from your anti-submarine sensors. Um, we had an opportunity, there was a, a group called uh, Task Force Alpha with the uh, American carrier Valley Forge. We we're in Halifax. We deployed aboard and headed off to the south to participate in an exercise which was an exercise against the nuclear skipjack, a nuclear submarine skipjack to see uh, how it fared against it. We get going on the exercise and the, the, uh, the object for Skipjack was to get inside the screen and raise hell around, around the, uh, the, the convoy. Um, we were briefed this one morning. We set out to uh, uh, search ahead of the convoy. And um, fortunately, we received a contact of Skipjack on the magnetic anomaly detector, which is just something in the airplane that detects uh, a uh, change in the Earth's magnetic field. I looked out the side of the, uh, the airplane and I could just see a hull long below, way below the, uh, the water. We dropped a smoke float and started tracking then. We went from there to another system, which was called Julie, explosive echo ranging, ranging sort of a sono boy uh, type situation. I brought the airplane around. I guess it was a little hairy for the boys in the back because I was back over the initial contact in about 40 seconds, and in a tracker, you had to crank it around a bit for that. Got another contact on MAD, and we went from there. The long and the short of it is that we tracked Skipjack for 55 minutes. The previous best time in tracking uh, Skipjack, the nuclear boat, was five minutes. So this system, the tactical navigation system, more than showed what it was capable of doing. We'd call other ships in that were there, they'd pick up the contact, then they'd lose them, we'd find them again. Helicopters come in, they'd lose them, we'd find them again. And it went on for 55 minutes. Uh, I think a lot of people today don't know that, uh, that Canada had a, a Canadian naval air arm. Do you want to talk just a bit about, uh, uh, about Canada's naval aviators? Well, I could talk forever on that subject. Uh, it's obviously my favorite one. But uh, I guess we go back when uh, the first carrier that, well, we've had five carriers in the Navy that not too many people know of, Puncher, Nabob. And from 1948 on, we had Warrior, then Magnificent, and then Bonaventure. I have to say that uh, naval aviators uh, are a special breed. They're a different group of cat. Uh, uh, you'll never get more dedicated or disciplined or fun-loving guys 
the naval aviators. They believe in what they're doing, and to this day, anyone that has been associated with uh, the RCN and naval aviation uh, is, remains very proud and very dedicated to it. Well, Dave, I don't have to ask you what your favorite aircraft is. I think we're sitting in it. So true. So the burning question that everybody wants to know is, what was this aircraft like to fly? This airplane, as I've often said, uh, was my first love. Uh, my wife uh, is now my first love. However, um, I felt comfortable the moment I got in it, even with all the power. It, it had so much power, was one of its attributes. You had 2,500 horsepower with a 12,000 pound airplane. And that's a lot, of, a lot of power for a small amount of airplane. The harmonization uh, of the controls, the responsiveness and the effectiveness of them was not as good as the sophisticated ones today, but it was, they were such that it made you feel right at home. It, the airplane felt part of you is the best way I can describe it. And uh, of all the aircraft I've flown, uh, I've flown a few, uh, this was and still remains my favorite. <laughs>